Well, good morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Thanks for joining me today. It's beautiful Monday, Monday, December the 7th, not 1941, but 2020. But we do remember what took place on that fateful day that started our involvement more completely in World War II. As we remember December 7th, today we'll also remember a different kind of war that we are already involved in right now. As we, as we get there, let me share some prayer requests with you today. Pray for Dan Radford. Dan is wrestling with a case of shingles. And right off, you probably know some other names of people wrestling with this horrendous disease. It's one of the most unpleasant things can happen to a human being. So I want you to pray for Dan and any others you might know that are wrestling with shingles today. And then I want to say a thank you to Brad Marcy Calder and Brad and Don, Don Douglas who took our youth, at least some of our youth, to Boone, North Carolina to work in Operation Christmas Child, helping pack shoeboxes to go all over the world. Samaritan's Purse does this fantastic ministry every year, and I hope you perhaps have had a chance to be a part of it as well, making a difference in the lives of children all over the planet. But you know, as we get to this particular day that we observe and remember because of its significance in uh, taking us into World War II, the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor that took place on that day, where thousands were killed. But yet it reminds us of another battle we are going through this day. It seems like in our nation, not as many as on Pearl Harbor, but a significant number are dying every day. It takes maybe three days for us to equal that number, but then it just keeps going over and over and over. What am I talking about? It's our battle with the pandemic of COVID-19 right now. We've had in our own country uh, rises in this ongoing fight uh, against COVID-19, rises in the numbers of cases and those folks who have died from those cases. Shout out of prayer today to you, Bob Moon. Now, I don't normally mention the names of people who come down with COVID unless they give me the permission to. Since you posted it on Facebook, brother, and showed us your test, even where you took it, the pharmacy that it came from, we can be praying for you today because you've tested positive for COVID-19. Now, in our case around this area, the folks we know that have tested positive for it have beaten it. But that's not true everywhere. Matter of fact, not too far from here in the Lexington School District, we just lost a teacher. I won't mention her name because I don't have permission to do so, but we just lost a teacher from COVID-19. This is one of the factors that's leading many of our schools to say, hey, from this point on through the Christmas holidays, we're just going to go ahead and go back, back off and go either totally virtual or at least partially virtual if you've been meeting every day. And this is such a change for our teachers and our kids. It's tough on them, so pray for both teachers and students. But uh, every time we lose a teacher, it becomes even more evident that this disease can have a severe impact on our lives. We set a South Carolina single day record over the weekend, over 2,500 new cases in one day. So it is a serious threat wherever you are in the world if it does get loose. Now listen, if you're in one of the places that's not having such a big increase, and we're in a county right now, Fairfield County, that does not seem to have a huge increase. We had no new cases yesterday, but we do have cases. And if we are not diligent in protecting ourselves and just being smart about the way we live and interact, then we can see those cases jump and spike even right here in our own backyard. So folks, be careful today as you're watching out for and praying for the people that do have COVID and pray for those folks in our positions of authority, whether it's local or state or national, as they try to make the correct decisions about how to deal with it. Because for so many, it seems like the decisions have just allowed them to do things that are ridiculous and then show what hypocrites they can be by not following their own orders. So folks, just continue to pray for these folks that are in positions of authority to protect us, that they will make the right decisions and not destroy more lives by the decisions they make. In Isaiah chapter 9 today, reading once again, talking about the names of Jesus as we're getting ready to celebrate Christmas. We had a great day yesterday in church 
with our second Sunday of Advent. We're reminded about this in Isaiah chapter 9, which I'll read from the New American Standard Bible, the uh, what I would uh, jokingly call the older New American Standard uh, Version, which says in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace. And on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. Today we're going to zero in on that stage of the, the scripture that says the everlasting father, the everlasting father. In this particular case, New American Standard calls it eternal father, eternal, everlasting. Either way, we have this statement about the Lord Jesus, that his name shall be called the eternal or the everlasting father. Listen to what Warren Wiersbe says about this, because this brings in a dimension that uh, it's going to take me more than one day to cover, lest I keep you for a long time. So listen. He says that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, should be called the Everlasting Father seems a mystery. If he is the Son, he cannot be the Father. Since each person in the Godhead is separate from the other persons, yet equally God, God the Father is God, God the Son is God, and God the Spirit is God, but the Father is not the Spirit and the Son is not the Father. Are you confused yet? The answer, of course, is in the Jewish use of the word Father. To an Old Testament Jew reading Isaiah's prophecy, the word father would mean originator of or author of. You know, Jesus called Satan the father of lies. In John 8, 44, Jabel was the father of such as dwell in tents and such as have cattle. <laughs> According to Genesis 4, 20, so in calling Jesus Christ the everlasting father, the prophet is saying he is the father of that which is everlasting. He's the father, the originator of eternity. Oh boy, the lights are already coming on, right? Yeah, eternity. Here is a concept so vast that the human mind can't grasp it. God is eternal. He has neither beginning nor end. Now man has a beginning, but is there an end and that's all there is? No, listen, when you trust Jesus Christ, you become part of eternity. Now listen to how, how Wearsby puts this. Listen carefully. He fathers eternity in your life. And this involves much more than simply forgiving your sins. You become a part of the very spiritual life of God. Because Jesus Christ is wonderful, he takes care of the dullness of life. Because he's counselor, he handles the decisions of life. The mighty God enables you to meet the demands of life. And the everlasting Father provides new dimensions to your life. You become a part of eternity. Isn't this a beautiful picture and a beautiful promise? Now you understand why you think beyond just the normal, everyday, mundane things of life. Why your mind just seems to escape into the stars and into these issues that deal with spiritual things and why you're drawn to those. Listen, Wiersbe puts it like this. Listen, he says, God made us for eternity. He's made everything appropriate in his time. And he's also set eternity in their heart without which men would, would not find out the work which God has done from the beginning even to the end. That's Ecclesiastes 3.11. This verse seems to suggest that God so made man's heart that man is dissatisfied with life on the surface and has a deep craving for that which is essential and eternal. Psalm 90 is one expression of man's frustration with time. Man knows that there's something more to this brief physical life that he's made for something greater than time. And man searches for this missing dimension. In one sense, all of man's quests in science, philosophy, exploration, and even religion are evidences of this deep thirst for the eternal how many people have died yearning for another lifetime in which to accomplish what they wanted to do? So folks, we're getting a picture of Christmas here that is much deeper than just 
a young couple having a baby in a stable, actually a cave type stable outside of Bethlehem. Friends, this rings out through all eternity, getting right down to the very purpose for which we feel God made us right here in our soul. It's no accident that you feel the way that you do and that you strive for this relationship with God and you want to know him deeper and have more understanding and wisdom about these spiritual things. That's the way that God made us. He made us for eternity. So this Christmas as you're celebrating, it's more than just, hey, what did I get for Christmas? What's wrapped up under the tree? Did I get what I wanted? We were kidding with a couple of folks in our church yesterday because they drove up in brand new pickup trucks. I said, guys, you already sh you've already showed up with your Christmas present. Congratulations. It's not about what you got for Christmas. It's about what we already have inside of us, this longing, this yearning for an eternal spiritual relationship with our Creator. That's what you really find. That's the biggest gift to unwrap if you never have before this Christmas. And that's a relationship with Jesus Christ, the everlasting Father. Well, God bless you. Thanks for sitting in with me for just a few more insights into this beautiful passage of Scripture. We'll do it again tomorrow and see some new depths to this phrase, Everlasting Father, you may not have thought of before. So celebrate this Christmas with your God, with the God of all eternity, who has put eternity in your heart for a reason. I'll see you again tomorrow right here as we wake up in the Word.